Okay, uh, polygenic and complementary activity, uh, page 48, question number one. I uh, wanted to go over this one because it's probably the legend that's the most difficult in this type of uh, polygenic type of question. So let's break this down. Legend first, we'll do that on the side here. And this legend will help you out for the remainder of those type of questions. Uh, very popular question, this one with the mice. So it says, in mice, uh, gene C causes a pigment to be produced, while a recessive gene little c makes it impossible to produce a pigment resulting in an albino. Okay, so I'm going to put a capital C here, and I'm going to say that this is going to give me pigment. Now, we don't know what color pigment yet because this is uh, polygenic, it's going to interact and be influenced by another gene. But if I have little c's here, uh, I don't care what other genes I have, this is always going to give me an albino. No pigment is going to be produced. Now it says another gene B located on a different chromosome, just reading here now, uh, causes the chemical reaction of the pigment to produce black color. Okay. So, uh, the pigment color black would be represented if I had a capital B here. Doesn't matter what the other allele is, but I must have a capital C for there to be a pigment produced. Okay, and if it is interacting with a, another gene, capital B, then it's going to be a black pigment that's going to be produced. Okay, uh, recessive little b causes incomplete breakdown and a tan light color is produced. So, I'm going to get a color, but I still have to have a capital C here for me to have some pigment. If, those, uh, if that other gene located on a different chromosome has two little b's, then this is going to be a tan pigment. Okay, and it says that here, genes that produce black or tan rely on gene C. So this part here makes me want to put these two together like this. I don't separate uh, separate them on my legend here, but are independent of it. So they're found on a different chromosome. So they depend on each other uh, for the pigment, uh, that capital C. So that's my legend here. This is probably the most difficult part of this question. Uh, you will see questions like this on your final and probably on your uh, unit five um, exam as well, unit exam. Okay, so legend, hardest part, just kind of practice that by interpreting the question here. So now we're gonna underline some parents here. So it says, indicate the phenotypes of the parents and provide genotypic and phenotypic ratio of the F1 generation from the following crosses. So we have one A here and then a bunch of other ones. So this part, once we have this legend, much easier. Now they want us, this is a little bit different, but they want the phenotypes of the parents. So it says here, if I have a capital C and a capital B, um, I don't care what the other allele are, are uh, what the other alleles are, if I have a capital C, capital B, this is going to be black. I'm going to squeeze that in because I want lots of room on the bottom here. And the other one, if I have a capital C, I'm going to get a pigment. But if I have two little b's, I'm going to get a tan pigment. So I have a black and a tan parent um, mating. So let's put our dihybrid. Now we're going to determine the gametes just like we did with any other dihybrid cross. We're going to use our um, foiling system. So big C matched with the little b. Okay, let's put that on top. Separate that. Big C matched with the other little b. Well, that's a repeat, so we're not going to show a repeat. This is a repeat. Don't show it. And you save yourself lots of time. So take the little c now and match it with the other one. Little c, little b. But the other one is also a repeat, so you're not going to show that. Do the same for the other parent. Uh, capital C, capital B, and you can see really quickly that everything else is a repeat. So we've taken 16 Punnett square, made it into two blocks. 
Now bring your C's together. Capital C, capital C, capital B, little b. Show the dominant allele first. Go to our legend. As long as I have a capital C and a capital B, this is always going to be a black uh, offspring. Capital C, little c, capital B, little b. Same thing. If I have a capital C and a capital B, this is always going to be black as well. Okay? So uh, my phenotypic ratio would be one black and or 100% if they wanted uh, percentage. And if they have anything else here, so let's say they said tan, or if they said how many were uh, albino, those would be zero, if they did have this on a numerical response question. Otherwise, here's our answer right there. Okay, if you have any issues about this legend or any of these other questions, uh, just give me an email and we can work it out together. Okay, thanks.